Oh man, that is one hell of an intro. What is up everyone? Welcome to Let's Play Mega Man X6 100%, the sixth entry in this eight-part series of 100% playthroughs I am doing for this awesome series. Here in X6, we are picking up where we left off in 5. Uh, I don't know if you caught it actually, but there's a, a continuity error in the opening there. Uh, the opening dates the game as occurring three weeks after X5, but it should be three years based on the ending of the last game. Uh, by the way, the canonical ending is the one in which Zero supposedly dies and X does not lose its memory. By the way, if you're wondering why these voices are in Japanese, uh, in the original release of this game, the cutscenes had the original Japanese voiceovers. Uh, it was later dropped when the game was re-released in the Mega Man X collection. Uh, this is not the X collection version, though. It's the original with the Japanese voiceovers, which are better anyway, to be honest. Uh, let us never forget the amazingness, the amazing awfulness of X40 and X5X. Uh, I'll try to scroll through the subtitles, which thankfully are in English, though they contain a lot of English. I'll try to scroll through them slowly enough so you can read what's going on. And just to summarize this opening cutscene here, uh, this is Gate, our main antagonist. He is at the, uh, he's at ground zero of where the Eurasia colony crashed from the last game. He's surveying the site of the Eurasia crash and he finds a bit of Zero's DNA, robo DNA, uh, at the crash site. And he decides to incorporate it into himself. And it drives him mad, because remember, we have this merged virus from the last game, the the colony virus, the Sigma virus, uh, all merging together with Zero's DNA, and we have the Zero virus now, the Zero Nightmare, as they will come to term it pretty soon. So the uh, the Japanese voiceovers and all of the, the really horrible localization, what of many... Quirks and flaws of X6. Uh, I do have a soft spot for this one, but there is so, so much wrong with it. And I... It previously said X6 is, X6 is my favorite of the uh, PS1 era X games. That's a little bit of nostalgia speaking, just because, like, I love the bosses of X6 way more than 4 or 5. There are some really, really big problems with this game, though. Uh... And a lot of them emerge, especially during the 100%. You'll see what I'm talking about once we actually get into the Investigator slash Maverick stages proper. Uh, this game is a, a fucking nightmare to 100%. It's fun to plan the route out, but to actually do the 100%, it's, it's not gonna be fun at all. <laughs> Uh, I will make it fun, though. I will make it through this. And then, after this, we get to endure X7 and X8, which are the dark times. No. Uh, part of the reason this game has so many weird flaws, including the localization issues, but not just limited to that, but gameplay issues as well, uh, it was rushed out. The development timeline was really tight on this one, uh, so it would hit not too long after the PS2 came out. And there's also the not-so-minor fact that Inafune intended for X5 to be the end of the X series. 
Uh, the Zero series was supposed to start here, but Capcom was like, no, we need more Mega Man X games. And now Capcom is all like, no, we need no Mega Man games ever. Cancel all the Mega Man games. Uh, Inafune actually had very little to do with this game at all. He just kind of told the team to finish it here. But we know better. X7 and 8 are still to come. Axel, get hype for Axel, woo. Uh, so, let's see, uh, I, I've been talking about why the, uh, well, not why, but the fact that the 100% is so awful in this one. Uh, the 100% for X6 includes all hearts as usual, all sub-tanks as usual, all armor capsules, which includes two different sets of armors. The two secret armors, uh, you get through a code at the start menu, I'm not bothering with that. All the parts and all of the rescuable Reploids are included in the 100%, which I will talk more about in just a moment. Uh, the Reploids are what make, and the parts, are what make the 100% such a nightmare. Uh, so there's a wrong way and a right way to do this fight. You can just shoot this Mechanoloid in the face a bunch of times. Uh, really though, what you want to do is you want to aim for the orb. That's about it. That's all there is to this intro boss stage. It's a more interesting intro boss than most of the others, but... Yeah, again, not too much going on with them. So, the thing that makes the Reploids uh, and the parts such a nightmare... The parts system uh, is returning from X5, but it has been drastically revamped. Uh, same for the Reploids that you can rescue. Also, I should add this caveat in now. If bullshit goes down, which it very likely could, I am not restarting the entire game to circumvent bullshit happening to the re to the uh, Reploids. Uh, so the parts work in a very different way from an X5. The parts that you gain are not at all based on boss level anymore, even though bosses do still level up as you progress. This time, you just get parts when you rescue certain Reploids. Uh, there's more nuances to that that we'll get into later. This is high max. This is a fight that we cannot win at this point in the game. Much like uh, harkening back to uh, Vile in X1. So yeah, that's how the parts work. As for the Reploids that you get the parts from, there are 128 Reploids you can rescue in the game. There are 16 per Investigator slash Maverick stage. Some of them have parts, some of them don't. They do not respawn, unlike in X5. And you can lose them permanently if they get infected by certain enemies. Uh, and the criteria for them to be infected by certain enemies is... Uh, the type of enemy I'm talking about, they're called Nightmares. All they have to do is float over to a, re a Reploid and touch them. That's all that has to happen for you to lose a rescuable Reploid permanently, and the part that he may or may not have for you. That is why this 100% is a complete nightmare. There is no mulligans. The only thing you can really do is start over from your last save file. Uh, this is Isaac. I believe he is a lieutenant of Gates, and he is pretty much just... Uh, it seems like he's still at the Eurasia crash site, but I guess not. He's broadcasting to the world. Uh, that he is sending out eight investigators to investigate this new mysterious nightmare virus that has surfaced uh, since the Eurasia colony crashed into the Earth, causing untold destruction. Uh, he's doing it in a very roundabout way, too. So yes, the 100% for this will include hearts, tanks, armor, as both armors as usual, all the parts and all the Reploids. Again, with the caveat that if a Reploid gets infected by a Nightmare, uh, I'm not restarting the game. Uh, the most I will do is hopefully I will have a, a consistent number of save files I can go back to if things go wrong. There are a couple of areas in the game that I am terrified to see how they go. Uh, because one in particular, one stage... Nightmare spawn almost directly on top of Reploids. So that'll be interesting to see how that goes.
Zero is such a Jesus allegory in this. He gave his life to save us. He gave Zero gave his life for our sins. Oh god, X6 talks more about Robo Hell and Robo Ghosts. I forgot about that. And souls, the nightmares drop souls. Oh god, we have robot heaven and hell, we have robot ghosts, and we have robot souls. It's great. Uh, and of course, Aaliyah and Cygnus are back. Aaliyah, uh. There. She's even more annoying in this one. Uh, because in addition to her warm up pep talks at the beginning of stages, she also sees fit to, like, anytime anything new happens in the game, flash a beeping exclamation mark up on your screen. That, does, that refuses to go away until you indulge her and talk to her. It's really, really irritating. That is a lot of text describing absolutely nothing. Uh, the first investigator we are going after is going to be Ground Scarevich, the, our good friend the Dung Beetle. Another weird little quirk about X6. The boss names are absolutely the most bizarre they have ever been. Uh, Ground Scarevich, I think, is one of the more normal ones. We have Blaze Heatniks, uh, uh, Infinity Maginion coming up. We have a lot of uh, weird boss names to go through. And we are going through Ground Scarevich's stage first, because it is by far the worst stage in the game. Uh, it's horrible. It is horrible. Horrible. Mainly because of these transparent blue totems. Uh, basically, uh, you get two things in this stage. You get torrents of these nightmare enemies, uh, the ones who will infect. Yeah, just like that. They hover right over them, in some cases. Yeah, these nightmare enemies will infect the rescuable reploids and render them permanently un salvageable so you get torrents of these enemies uh, in these sub stages you also have a pool of like eight I think of these sub stages that the game randomly chooses between and it can choose one handful over and over and over again it's entirely random and it's entirely possible that you could do this stage ten times in a row and never see the heart container that's in this level, you could never see the armor capsule, and you could never see the secret boss room, or or all of the reploids, all 16 of them, uh, just because of the, na the random nature of the sub-levels. Uh, it's horrible. And then the main level itself is just a big zigzag. There's no level design here. Uh, if I am lucky, though, RNGesus will bless me with the most favorable random outcomes possible, which would basically be heart, armor capsule, secret boss room, and then no repeats of the substages. That would be awesome. Uh, say a prayer to RN Jesus for me. RN Jesus died for your off spec need rolls. This is the shit I'm talking about with the torrents of, of nightmares. I'm mostly going to be blitzing through these guys, uh, through the many, many nightmares and some of the sub-stages. Uh, X's puny little thin charge shot in this one, uh, it does not do it for me. Uh, their hitboxes are on their upper torsos and their heads. If we had, like, the X1 charge shot, which took up a giant chunk of the screen, the big fat charge shot, that would be great. I hate... Ever since they changed it, I've hated the charge shot in the X Games. And we also don't have some of the stronger boss weapons going into the stage, but I just want to get this one out of the way. Because it is such a nightmare to go through this level. Uh, I'm not a big fan of fighting the totems either. The totems, uh, the later... The last one in the stage. The last totem in the stage is a huge pain in the ass. It might uh, kill me flat out. Uh, something else I've not mentioned about X6 is it is a, a dramatically harder game 
than any other X game. Uh, I think it's honestly one of the hardest Mega Man games. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the fact that the 100% is so difficult, but aside from that, the bosses are really tough. Uh, some of the, the stage layouts can be fairly difficult, fairly unforgiving. That, and they just kind of throw tons and tons of enemies at you, uh, way more so than usual. They kind of forego actual level design and clever placement of interesting enemies, and they just throw tons of shit at you. Uh, Gameplay-wise, the nightmares are not interesting designs, and they're kind of frustrating to fight. As an actual, just like a design for an enemy, though, they are pretty cool. And we're going to be heading into the secret level. Uh, the secret sub-level, I guess. Something cool to note about the nightmares I was just trying to, uh, to allude to. It's hard to tell with the in-game sprites because it's such low resolution. But their flailing tentacles, those limbs, they're actually not tentacles. They're helixes of DNA. If you check them out in the, uh, the, the art book, the Mega Man 25 art book, which, by the way, if you're a big fan of Mega Man as a series and you don't own that thing, you have to pick it up. It's like, it's the Mega Man Bible. Uh, but if you check their designs out in the art book, you can actually see the helixes in pretty clear detail, and it's really, really awesome. Uh, coming up is a fight against none other than Nightmare Zero, and I am going into this fight with about... A little over half health, close to 75%. Is that a- is that a fucking Iori laugh? Are we stealing from SNK now? I swear I heard Iori's laugh there. Uh, the Nightmare Zero fight is pretty, pretty identical to the one in X5. It even has the same awesome-ass music. Uh, however, I am both rusty and bad at this fight, and I'm going in at low, low, low health. <laughs> He, one key difference to note about this fight and the one from X5 is that Zero in this one does not spam that ground punch attack as much. Which, hell, that works for me. Because that's the attack that I have the hardest time dodging. Uh, I actually need to shut up a little bit and focus because he might just kill me. Uh, this is a pretty difficult fight. Uh, okay. Luck is holding up for me on dodging that so far. A second time? Oh, am I? No! It came close, though. I'm proud that I dodged two in a row. I usually get obliterated by that attack uh, in both games, in X5 and 6. So we took a portal to get here. It was that giant, uh blue portal in the uh, substage. Every investigator stage in the game has one of those portals. There are three uh, optional secret boss fights, this being the first one. Uh, they go in a set order, and the first one that you fight is zero, the first time you enter one of the secret boss stages. Uh, the second one is going to be high max, and the third one is going to be a returning character from X5. I won't spoil who, though. Uh, after you beat Nightmare Zero and High Max in these secret stages... Whoop. After you beat those two in the secret stages, uh, the third boss you will, will be available to fight in every single... Uh, every single hidden stage. I'm going to at least show all three of the optional bosses off. I don't know if I'm going to show the location of... Shit, that was close. I don't know if I'm going to show the location of every single uh, hidden boss room in every level. I am going to do at least three so I can fight all three of them, though. Uh, the third one, the third boss, you can just farm over and over again if you want. Unfortunately... When you go through a hidden stage and beat the boss of that hidden stage... You get teleported out of the stage as if you beat it. So we have to go back through Ground Scaravich's stage 
uh, to fight the actual boss, uh, Scaravich himself, in just a second. But for defeating Nightmare Zero, X gets a heartfelt reunion with his old friend, who we all thought was dead, but he was just lying in wait, repairing himself. I think that line about... I think that line is complete nonsense made up for the localization about him hiding himself to repair himself. I don't I don't remember if they actually give a, can, a canonical explanation for how Zero comes back to life. But, yeah. Glorious nipple gems and full widescreen. I don't know why it switches between aspect ratios. This game does that sometimes. The cutscenes will sometimes be in widescreen. And Aaliyah is explaining about the Nightmare Souls, which you get off of Nightmares. Uh, they are used to boost your rank, which I'll talk about in just a second. For beating Zero, we now get to play Zero again. Uh, back to the Souls and the ranking system and all that stuff, though. Uh, your rank is not based on your performance in this game. It's based on how many Souls you collect from the Nightmares. Uh, the Nightmares will respawn, but they only drop their souls the first time you kill them. Uh, the first rank that you can achieve is... You achieve it at, like, 200 souls collected. Rank UH, which is the highest rank, you get at 10,000 souls, I think. Uh, there is a way to farm them later. That I'll be showing off a little bit. The higher your rank, the more parts you can equip. GA, which is at like 1500 souls, you can equip limited parts, which are one time use, I want to say, or at least you can only use them once per stage. And luckily, I'm getting a good bit of luck here with different stages on my second uh, pass through Scaravich's stage. Uh, yeah, 1500 souls, uh, the rank you get there, GA. You will be able to equip limited parts. Also, if you collect 3,000 souls before you beat the eight investigators, you can go straight to the final areas to Gates levels. Gates Secret Laboratory, I think it's called. Oh, by the way, aside from the limited parts, there are also a few other types. Uh, some parts can be equipped by X or Zero, and some parts are specific to either of them. Uh, some can only be used by X, some can only be used by Zero. You can also find additional life and weapon energy from the Reploids you rescue, which is quite handy. Ah! Damn it. So, I am getting at least this stage repeated. Shit! I don't... Is it just me? Like, can, can anyone who has played X6, X6 attest to this? It seems like when you get hit in this one, you turn to face towards the enemy who hit you. Or at least you turn to face towards the side you were hit from. It feels like it works that way, and I can't remember it ever working like that before. Maybe I just get hit more on X6 so I notice it more now? I feel like I get turned around by whenever I get hit, though, and it's really fucking irritating. Uh, it's especially gonna be bad for the upcoming totem fight. Oh, and by the way, the way these work is, uh, whenever you destroy two of the heads, the middle eagle part will come after you, and then after you destroy the middle eagle part, the remaining two heads will speed up their pattern of, uh, turning it back around. Yes, new substage, that's fine. Death is acceptable here. In fact, you're going to be seeing me die a lot to pitfalls, mainly because I'm going to just be straight up uh, dive bombing those Reploids to make sure that they don't get infected by the Nightmare. Uh, I will be dying a lot to pitfalls just to rescue those Reploids. Like, here, maybe? Nah. Okay, I could air dash to safety for that one. One thing that you don't get with the returning Falcon Armor in X5, you don't get the flight mode that the Falcon Armor used to have. Uh, before, if you didn't watch X5, the Falcon Armor had a mode where you could pretty much just hover off the ground and fly around a little bit. 
for a couple of seconds at a time. Uh, what the Falcon Armor does retain is its Air Dash, which is a nice consolation prize. Uh, it also retains the ability to charge Maverick weapons, I want to say. can't remember if that's ch completely true. Uh, and of course, X has zero Z-Saber in this one. Ah, that totem fight went pretty well. Also, Zero has X's Buster in this one, so they both have each other access to each other's weapons. Shit, I was hoping I wouldn't get this one. Oh. I think elements of the stages are also uh, slightly randomized. I'm pretty sure that pit of spikes was not there before uh, the last time we came through here. Okay, so I have to avoid jumping into the portal by accident, which might be a pain. And we will just blitz through this. Ah, ah, ah! Okay. Oh, shit. I got through that, but I realized something really dumb, which is I have not left myself nearly enough health to deal with this bullshit totem fight. I might... yeah, I, I don't think I can possibly win this fight. We'll see, though. If I can... Uh, nope, there's no way. I'm gonna take damage. Yeah, let's start over real quick. Okay. Let's do this right this time. I got through the same substage I was just in, except with a hair more health this time. Oh god, I hate doing this bottom one. I hate this one so much. Uh, because sometimes when you get hit, you get pushed back into the spikes, and when your invincibility frames wear off, if you haven't moved back up a little bit, you will just die to the spikes. I, I never have found a good strategy for doing that totem. Uh, at least if I do Ground Scaravich's stage first. Because when you do a stage first, you don't have access to any of the awesome uh, boss weapons, which make the totems a lot easier to handle. Now, after a hellish uh, Nightmare Zero fight and a pretty tough fight which preceded this one against that totem, we get a boss which is much, much more pathetic than anything in his stage. Uh, this is Ground Scaravich, the Dung Beetle boss. His desperation attack is just kicking his rock at you whenever he loses his boulder, which I get... I guess it should be his pile of dung, but, uh, eh, whatever. I'll settle for the rock. Whenever he loses that, he comes back with a bigger one. The biggest ones can reach about 75% of the way up the screen. He's not getting the opportunity to do that, though. Oh, God, Scaravich is such a piece of shit. No pun intended, I think. <laughs> and I believe that final Nightmare Soul you collect at the end of a stage is a reward for your performance in the stage. It's either that or it's just based on raw time it takes to complete the stage, how big a reward you get at the end is. Uh, the faster you complete the stage, the bigger your soul reward is. I did not get the Speedster upgrade yet, either, uh, which is going to make accessing some collectibles in later stages a pain in the ass. So, I don't know if I want to go through the stage again and get the Speedster upgrade real quick if RNG Jesus favors me with his blessing. Or if I want to just continue on to the next couple of bosses. Uh, let's see. What's going on in this cutscene? I think this is just a little bit of foreshadowing about Gate's upcoming evil scheme. And they're discussing how X might be a threat to their plans. And so Gate is basically telling Isaac to stall X so that Gate can prepare his evil, evil schemes. かしこまり。ところで。おそらく。いや、そん。それに。ランクの低い。
X to E. And after this dialogue plays out, that's gonna do it for this episode of Let's Play Mega Man X6. Next time we will get around to going after a couple more investigators and probably a couple of extra uh, optional secret bosses too. For now though, thanks for watching everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.